Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we went from New Winchester to Carillon and then Lustrum and then the Nature Reserve, finally finishing off the Incautious Driver's quest, who has now become, well, not the Incautious Driver anymore. They are now the Judicious Driver. So I think their quest line is finished. Next thing I want to do is just continue on with all the places in the Reach, because I have quests for almost everything. So let's head to Titania. There's probably something I can do there. cabin. Alright, the good old reach where you always get salons dude gossip. The incognito princess's eyes gleam. Titania is like a brooch. I want it. Oh, uh, let me get to port before you attack me. I don't know why they're coming for me. I don't think I have nectar on me, do I? I hope we can start rebuilding Titania, finally. Ah, yeah, do I have nectar? Oh, I do have nectar on me. That explains it. Let's attend an art exhibition. That should reduce our terror, 24%. Down to 14%. The reach is amazing for terror reduction. So much better than Albion. Let's get a port report. Wit in Vinegar, Find the Midnight Rose. What was that about? Oh, right, the gloomy, the gloomy middleman. Remember I met them when I first arrived at London. They talked about how uh, the supply of red honey had dried up from Titania and they wanted me to investigate. Find the Midnight Rose. The Midnight Rose who trades in red honey have their base here. The gloomy middleman wants you to find out why the honey supply has dried up. Somewhere amidst the garrets and galleries of Titania, hide the Midnight Rose. They make red honey, an old London vice. The manner of its creation is a secret, but is rumored to require a breed of rose first grown in hell, bees and memories harvested from caged subjects. Imbibing red honey allows you to live those memories, to ransack the contents of another's heart. Yeah, I remember. I was actually involved in the business of running red honey in the Sunless Seas. Not really a good business. Ooh, I can use the art of a deduction, or we can engage in a trade of gossip. <clears throat> Ask the incognito princess. Let's do that. Where to find them? You've heard that the royal family were enthusiastic devotees of red honey. Perhaps she can help like moths to a flame. Oh, honey made me the woman I am today, she says with a secretive smile. I'd be happy to help. She strides from salon to salon, letting a crowd of adoring poets, artists, and addicts flock to her. Within an hour, she secured you an introduction. A precarious descent of ladders leads down to the hideout of the Midnight Rose, a spiral of rickety platforms clinging to the great orchid's stalk. There, the rose have constructed an edifice of glass, something between an orangery and a cowshed. It hums with bees and shivers with sobbing. The Midnight Rose are a close-knit coterie that produce precise vintages of red honey. If you want to taste the bleak memories of an orphan or the excess of a reckless libertine, they're able to provide... Their leader is an ethereal apiarist, whose laced gowns are stained at the hem with grass and soil. Bees crawl lazily in her wild hair. Hand over an unlicensed chart. I have two of those. There are paths through the clogging undergrowth of the Reach that even this once smuggler turned ravenous man won't know. Uh, well... Hmm. Before we hand over anything, let's just figure out kind of who they are. 
accompany her as she works in the glass house. She is disarmingly frank. The red honey trade seems to be something of an open secret in Titania, the other side of the port's coin. Rose bushes heap against the glass and climb in thorny tangles through the greenhouse. Among them are tall cages, each occupied by a prisoner. Bees buzz into and out of their ears and sip from the corners of their eyes. The prisoners cry out and sob and plead. Look closer, the apiarist says. Around each of their necks hangs a key on a chain. They can free themselves at any time, but choose not to. They're artists, you see. They believe they must suffer if they are to one day make great art. Seriously? Compliment? Say nothing, or... That's bollocks, isn't it? Art no more relies on misery than plumbing relies on ennui. She has the dignity to look awkward. Yes, well, they're romantics. Perhaps telling themselves this lie will give them the confidence to make something remarkable. Think of it as a placebo. The medicine was only water and sugar, but the patient still recovered. I d hmm. Are you sure that they can let themselves out at any time? The prisoners cry out and sob and plead. Why would they be pleading if they could just let themselves out? I can siphon some funds towards creating a front. Uh, you must be at least 50% of the way towards funding a project at Titania to do this. Okay, well... <clears throat> I'm going to take them at their word. Not going to try to think too much into it. The way it's presented is that they can let themselves out, so they're not really prisoners. Eh. Eh. Let's hand over an unlicensed chart. Secret Ways. You and the Apier have spent a coffee-fueled night combing your chart, plotting new hidden routes for their couriers to use. The way will be dangerous. You've had to favor circuitous, little-used paths plagued by the candle wind, but a dreadnought would never be able to traverse them. The ethereal, ethereal apiarist is pleased. The gloomy middleman probably won't be, but he might be slightly less miserable. You'd better deliver the good news to him. Okay. Solve the problem. Now, can we start get a, get a new start for Titania? Ah, right. The decision was between an Albion style or an Eleutherian aesthetic. Which you can only do kind of once you've visited the place. Obviously, I haven't done that with Eleutheria. I just want to see what the description of Eleutheria is, because I have no idea what it looks like. Her dark beauty, the lure of the classic and the pagan. The melancholy poet almost cracks a slight smile. What inspiration we can draw from that horror. Hmm. And for Albion, a little slice of home in the reach, says the stone-faced sculptor. A, <laughs> a sturdy rock from which we can help guide the future. I just realized how funny it is that they're the stone-faced sculptor. Anyway, I feel like they're kind of baiting me. Because surely anybody is going to go to Albion before Eleutheria. Right? I mean, I could go to Eltheria. It's over here. It costs some stuff that I don't remember exactly, but I could do it. But it would just be for the purpose of being able to advocate for the aesthetic. But I also wonder if it's a sort of thing where, like, if you wait longer and unlock the more difficult one, the Eleutherian aesthetic, maybe it ends up better? It's going to be quite a while till I go to Eleutheria, and I don't want to go there just to unlock this. Especially since after you go to Eleutheria, you're actually trapped there for a while. Let's just advocate for an Albion style. The stone-faced sculptor is quick to capitalize on this moment of agreement. Before the day is out, the docks at least have a familiar Albion look to them. The rest of the port will take a little longer before it's ready for expansion. Each captain in your lineage will be able to choose another expansion for Titania until the port is completed. 
You can also donate to its progress to continue expanding it with a single captain, but this will get more expensive as development continues. The more you expand the port, the more bargains, prospects, and other opportunities will be made available, with individual buildings offering one, one boon per captain. Now I have one affiliation with Bohemia. Hmm. I wonder how good we can make this place and how expensive it can get. Somebody in the comments a while ago told me that I shouldn't pour my own money into this place because there's somebody in... I think it was somebody in Albion that could do it for me. Someone else who wants to invest? This doesn't seem to mention anything about that, so I don't know where I would find that person. Titan must be fully repaired to fund new construction. Must be fully repaired. Fully repaired, yeah. Assist with port repairs. Despite the moderate damage from the Chorister Hive attacks, life goes on. The Rhapsodic Mayor is delighted to receive your contribution. Excellent. Those infernal buzzing creatures of destruction. Current port damage, 50%. Pay for all port repairs. Turn to the main dome. Contribute 100 sovereigns. What's the full price? Wait, that's it? To fully repair the port just costs 50 sovereigns? Okay, well, pff, let's do that. It's really not a very impressive donation. This will be more than sufficient. Thank you. So, it's... Is it instantly fixed? I guess it is, actually. Because these are open now. Contribute funds to Titania. Meet with the mayor. I can't advise on the next upgrade. Has to be funded to start a new project. Or something like that. Yeah, how much funds would I have to contribute? Just out of curiosity. The Rhapsodic Mayor is pleased to receive your contribution. Every little helps. She smiles. A pause. Though a lot definitely helps more. <laughs> 100, 500, 1,000. Funding the next stage costs 1,000. That is a bit pricey. There's no point in contributing to the construction unless you get to one of the other stages, right? I mean, 75% done isn't going to do anything, right? Until you reach the next stage. Uh, let's meet with the mayor. Ah, yes, remember. I needed a cutting of a petal a long time ago for the nature reserve, and I thought I probably have to repair this place to be able to get it, and I was right. Titanius petals fill the air with a perpetual perfume, but eventually become accustomed to it. Even so, the scent of the many flowers in the mayor's small office sends your senses reeling. Obviously unaffected, she sits behind her desk and gestures for you to take the other chair. Request a cutting of a petal. The phlegmatic researcher in the LNS Nature Reserve has expressed interest in Titania. The Rhapsodic Mayor is only too happy to oblige you. I'll have a sample sent to your engine in a moment, she says. We may not be scientifically minded here, but we do love to learn more about our wonderful flower. Ask the mayor about Titania? I've already done these before. These aren't any different, right? Yeah, that's just the same old descriptions. Yeah, so I'm going to wait to see if I can find somebody who's willing to contribute funds in Albion. Before I contribute any myself. There's something I want to do here. Porphyry, porphyry, porphyry font. A veiled pavilion rests in the curve of one of Titania's great petals. Here, the melancholy poet gathers stories from sky fairs. She then arranges to pass them on to any artist or writer willing to pay for inspiration to spur their brush or steer their pen. Basically, you donate a bunch of sky stories or a vision of the heavens or a moment of inspiration or other things to get experience and sovereigns. And I think I want to do that, because I have a lot of some of these things, way more than I think I'm ever going to be able to use. For example, Sky Stories. I have 56. Let's donate some. I think we've done this once, right? Fills out a whole journal, since for fresh bottle of ink, this will need to go, go to someone of singular talent. Yeah, we've seen that before. Let's do that a couple times. Maybe like four times. 
I don't need 46 sky stories. That's absurd. Maybe I'll get myself down to like 20 or so. 36. 31. I'll do it one more time. 26. That should be plenty for anything. Want to do a similar thing with a vision of the heavens. Oh, that sound. You can probably hear that. That's uh, construction going on upstairs. So this just takes one vision of the heavens, and I have 31. That's so many. Um, I'm going to keep doing this until I get down to, let's say, 15. Let's see if the description's different, though, before I cut. Uh, yeah, this is a different. A reverie. The melancholy poet sighs longingly. Such courage, comrade. Oh, to walk the paths of heaven and glut your eyes with wonders. The reward is handsome. The poet's look is admiring. Alright, down to 15 of those. Maybe I want to spend more sky stories. 26. Let's, let's throw another 5 in there. I don't even know how much money I've gotten from all that. Do I also want to donate a moment of inspiration? 300 sovereigns is a lot. I have 5? No. I mean, I don't seem to need them very often, but... They're pretty hard to get. I'll save those. Yeah, how am I looking? Everything's super laggy, by the way, because I just like created a massive log of text here. 6,000 sovereigns. Oh yeah, we are going to be buying a new ship and some new guns pretty soon when I get back to Albion. Right, so I'm going to leave Titania and uh, I think head for the circus. Don't know if I have any business there, but always good to hit it up. It's pretty much along the way anyway. But the problem is, I have honey on board, and there's a million bees around, so I think I'm going to have to fight them. It's about to get very loud. Here we go. Gotta keep in mind I don't have any extra hold space, so let's just collect uh, some wings for the nature reserve, sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother recovering the nectar. Again, no space. Listen to its death hymn. Hymn? Hymn? 150 experience. The sound is memorable, but not notably distressing until that high C which makes your teeth itch. Afterwards, are you wiser? Are you stronger? You are not less so. The bees died. You lived. Yeah, these bees are really no match for my relatively powerful weapons. Let's do that again, some more experience. The friend Japani. Oh, that's a good name. Signal it? Yeah. Oh, right. I forgot that we needed more crew because I left a bunch of them at Lustrum. Not that I could have gotten crew at any of the previous ports. A reticent recruit. A faltering glow burns in the frost when you signal it. Someone has struck a match. You dispatch a boarding party. They retrieve a survivor who is eager to sign on and a hard worker, if surly from their long isolation. Oh, hey. Damn it. Captain's cabin. We know what we're going to get. Some juicy gossip. It's been so long since I've been to the circus. Let's listen to the new arrival's stories. Oh, right. I can attempt to recruit crew members. I guess that's more important than listening to the stories, actually, because I can get down my terror just by looking at the amusements. Failure. Nobody wants to come. Let's get a port report. Actually, free tickets first. Port report. Visit the amusements. 
9%. Let's get our terror all the way down. Yeah, so I don't think we have any uh, story stuff to do here. Oh, I can try to recruit crew from the circus as like a separate thing. You'll need to be persuasive. The circus has some kind of a hold on people. Hey! One person? Yeah. Running away from the circus. <laughs> Your new crew member stares back, first at the big top, then at the vast carved obelisk. With difficulty, they turn away. Ready for service, Captain. Let's just buy as much carefully packed crates of munitions as I can and head on over to New Winchester to dump off a bunch of stuff. Back in New Winchester, let's dump off the many, many things that we've collected. Except for the egg, I want to keep that on board so it can crack at some point. Don't think anything will happen to it if I put it away in the bank. Let's repair my locomotive. Let's recruit more people. Three to four people. Oh yeah, that'll be all I need then. Alright, I can deliver the pamphlets about the dangers of Apollonian cinders. Drop them off in the square, put them up in the boulevards that people must know. I've done that before, so I won't read that. Okay, dumped everything off. I took all the prospects that they had available. Not going to do any of them right now, but I've got one to deliver seeds to Titania and literature to Traders Wood. I'm not going back up to Titania right now, and I don't have any literature for Traders Wood. So, just got a bunch of fuel and supplies, and I'm going to head down to Port Avon, because I know at the least we have something to do there about fixing a clock or something like that. A quest we got from the Horological Office. Fungal Fragment. Cut. Cut free the fungal crinoline to turn into the nature reserve. At Port Avon now. Let's, uh, yeah, let's hear some gossip. I don't remember what my welcome's at. It's now ten or more. Okay, that's plenty. Let's get a port report. Let's investigate the clocks. The port's clock is running eight hours fast. That makes for a whole day's work that technically shouldn't have happened. Your horological office pocket watch affords you access to the port's primary clock, from which others in the area get their time. You unpack your tools to begin. Assorted screwdrivers, brushes, pliers, tweezers, a small bottle of oil, a jeweler's loop. Oh, I can sabotage the clock. <laughs> uh, so I can correct it. 62% chance of success. That's pretty hard to do, actually, because my mirror skill is pretty good. Leave it as is. Sabotage the clock. Hmm... That is pretty funny to have the clocks be deliberately wrong. I mean, it's not like somebody's gonna die, right? The whole thing is kind of silly. Let's sabotage it. You have your reasons and nobody's watching. <laughs> I think Elizabeth is just being a bit mischievous. Because obviously, you know, joining the Horological Office as one of their members was kind of a joke. I didn't even think it, Elizabeth didn't even think it would happen. It's just like, uh, sure, I'll take the test. And then we passed it. It's not like I feel like I have some, some duty to be a good royal horological officer or whatever. No, I failed at sabotage. Time keeps on slipping. Slipping, slipping, slipping. The custodians of the port clock may not be trained horolo horologists, but they know sabotage when they see it. You have just enough time to scoop up your tools and flee before they return with either local law enforcement or their own heavy sticks. My assignment's over. I've lost strength of the sun. Fuck. Now it's 35. The suns didn't like that, I guess. My assignment's over. What are they going to say when I get back? Do they... Are they going to be informed of what happened? Are they going to be like, yeah, okay, you did it, cool. Let's read this note from Mr. Menagerie. It tells me where they were, or where, where they are going to be next. And last time I read it, I didn't know what they were talking about. I hadn't visited the port that would make it make sense. House of Invention near the Ormswood, or Ormswold. I still don't know where that is. 
I mean, I'm sure I'll just come across Mr. Benagerie at some point. Probably in Albion, I would guess. It's been a quiet day here. Cheap fuel? Um, yeah, I've got the space for it. Two fuel for 20 sovereigns. Half off? Guess let's reduce terror and, and whatnot a little bit. Village green. Relaxing stroll. Attend a service at the church. Got a sky story. Just visit the allotments. Uncanny specimen. Visit the allotments again. Uncanny specimen. Visit the allotments again. Uncanny specimen. <laughs> Is it with the eel fishers? Thank God, something different. All right, that's good. No, actually, let's watch a cricket match. Zero percent there. Nice. Let's uh, spread some more gossip, because that, that just used up quite a bit of my welcome. Uh, now it's up to eight. Plenty high. Anything I want to do at the inn? No, I don't want to read fiction or anything like that. My terror is good. Let's do some digging at the ruins. Conduct a nocturnal, nocturnal excavation. 90% chance of success. Jumble of undistinguished souls. Let's do it again. Another jumble. Partial success. Ah, right, this is the one where people are coming and I can either, like, lose additional welcome, capturing them, just flee, hurry, that will lose you a crew. Oh, hell no, just flee. Eh, let's keep going. Really? Partial success again? Flee. Again. Got a 90% chance of success. Hmm. I feel like they're deliberately stopping you from doing this many, many, many times in a row by giving you these partial successes. Imagine if you got your veil skill up. I mean, yeah, like, I imagine if you got your veil skill up to something where this is basically 100%, you could just sit here, click, 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 and just keep farming, which is kind of absurd. I'm basically done here then. Let's share a little bit more gossip. Welcome's up to five. Let's do it again. Welcome's up to seven. That's good. Ooh, they have a bargain for bombazine. Bales of cellar woven bombazine. Bombazine is worked in the dark in candleless rooms with boarded windows. A milk-eyed weaver sells rolls of the cloth she has made in her cellar. It's black and splendid, drinking the starlight thirstily. Well, I definitely want to buy all of that. The princess looks concerned. Why would you name a wood after a traitor? A sewer, maybe. <laughs> uh, yes, I love Port Avon and I'm coming over to Trader's Wood. Not that I have any business here, as far as I can remember. But it's basically the same distance from Port Avon to Trader's Wood and then to Magdalene's than it is to go from here straight to Magdalene's. Because you gotta go like all the way up and then around and down and... Yeah, it just made sense to go here. Get a port report if nothing else. Maybe there is some business that I forgot. Remember, we are supposed to come back to Trader's Wood on August something, 1907. It is 1907 now, 26th of January. So not exactly soon, but in a bit, we need to come back here to finish up the Regent's Grave quest. Find out what happened. Definitely not doing any expeditions. Respite from labor. Offer stable employment. What does that do? Oh, right, yeah, I'm full on crew. I can't do anything like that. Don't have room. Let's get a port report. Can I get a port report? I guess I'll gather something. Oh, a caged catch. I need a certain amount of those for something that I forgot, I think, for one of the quests. With, uh... The Ernest Agitator and all their friends. 49% chance of success. This is not terrible. The game in the forest is unparalleled. The glories of the sport it offers are spoken of even in the hunting lodges of Port Avon. Success! A keen-eyed stoker spies tracks leading into the wood. You follow them. Birds cry out in the canopy ahead of you. 
Startled by something moving, you quicken your pace. Your quarry slows, allowing you to catch up. It stands in a copse of silverwood, a proud stag with its many tined triple crown. It, its majesty does not spare at your bullets. It takes five people to carry it back to your engine. The I don't really feel good about that. So wait, why would it be caged if it's dead? I don't understand that. Ah, it's in the parting glade where we can write a port report. This is also where we're supposed to meet the person after a year, by the way. The Regent's Grave thing. We can find a screaming mandrake for the researcher at Na the Nature Reserve. Wasn't there something else? Explore it. I don't think that does anything in particular. No. Nope. We've done that before. No. Oh, wait, no, they do have a deal. Oh, they have bronze wood. The more expensive the item, the more profit you get for each bargain. Well, I have one room. Alright, off to Magdalene's. Magdalene's? Poor report. Take a look at the keepsake market, sure. Oh, old journal. I think that gives you a tale of terror or something like that, or maybe a savage secret. Hmm, reduce terror. I'm at 7%. I don't need to do that. This costs 60 sovereigns. I don't really need to do any of this, actually. None of it's worth it. I do want to treat my nightmares, though. I've got one level of nightmares. What's it going to cost this time? Moment of inspiration. So, who do I see? Uh, my mother. She's present for a given value of the term. Mother sits behind a screen today. Her head aches, she says, but is dismissive of any intimation of concern on your part. She wants only to hear your concerns. She has her knitting. I thought your engine could use a little color, she says. Hookah smoke emerges in billows from behind the painted screen. Very odd. What are we supposed to do something here? There was some story thing we were supposed to do here, right? Ah, oh, right, the clay conductor. There's supposed to be somebody here that might be made of clay, I think, or something. Um. Ah, it's in the solace chambers, the tree true terror thing. Request a clay attendant for the clay conductor. Clay conductor wishes to know if they will perform the music of the clay choirs. A falsehood? The attendant cannot hide a small frown. Ah, we've not been asked for that in a while. Let me just go and talk to the lads. You're invited to take a seat. Clay conductor is already expecting disappointment. Sometime later, the attendant returns with three weathered clay men. Their skin is cracked and craggy. Their eyes are roomy, clouded as pearl. They launch into song, eerie and low, redolent of drudgery and despair. The clay conductor leaves before they finish. There were clearly attendants in disguise, he tells you scornfully. Even the singing, a thin facsimile like everything here. They are very hard to please, but I'll keep trying to please them. He was unimpressed by the music at Magdalene's. Should you be looking elsewhere for other candidates suitable for a clay choir? The clay conductor is going through his suitcase. The urn lies on the floor. We used to tour the work worlds together, he tells you. Rarely appreciated, but we got paid. He unearths a sheaf of pages. And we wrote our own music. If I could just find someone capable of the harmonies again. He begins to rifle through the sheets. His lips move with the notes. One larger finger chasing the key changes across the pages. Or one large finger, rather, not larger. He starts as he remembers you're still in his cabin. Forgive me, Captain. His voice is a little thicker than usual. I'm afraid I'm going to take the afternoon off. He will need a little time. The clay conductor is sulking. Aw. 
just look through all of my quests, and yeah, it looks like we're done in the Reach. There's nothing more to do here except uh, we do need to meet with the aunt's friend in Port Prosper, but that's it, and that's on the way out. So let's head to Port Prosper. I could do, like, I could do the seed prospect for Titania, deliver five, but seeds are worth so little that it's not worth it at all. Yeah, to Port Prosper, and I'm going to take the quickest route, which looks to be through Braley Rock, which is a horror. Or, you know it would be better though, I think this might actually be a, a through way right here. Let's try that. I'm actually full on stuff. One sec. Let me get through all my fuel or supplies. There we go. So blue. Such an eerie blue glow. This sort of bluish fog makes me think of creepy fog at a cemetery. I guess like a stereotype of creepy fog at a cemetery. The Fallows. Glad I went here. And yeah, it goes all the way through. Okay, see you back aboard Prosper. Homestead. Let's get a colony of ants. Thank you. Oh, two tackities. Okay, I'll join this fight. Navigation suite, master stamp permit, charge stovepipe nameplate. Shit, shit, shit. Oh, whew. The shots were pushing into the wall so I couldn't turn to even shoot it. Gain supplies. Mm. Nah, engine's lockbox. I'm good on supplies. 150 sovereigns and an invitation to Perdurance. Alright, good job, Taggities. Nice fighting with you. Just arrived at Port Prosper. I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. It's been going on pretty long at this point. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to meet the aunt's friend at Port Prosper. See what that strange, suspicious meeting that we overheard was all about. And then, unless the quest takes us somewhere within the Reach, we're gonna head back to Albion.